Obviously, you're coming back as assistant player coach. Moving into that more coaching type role, how does that affect your preparation and your thought process going into a new season? Um, it's not, you know, I, like I said, I, I'm coming in as a player as well. So I got to be, you know, ready to perform like I always have as a player. And, uh, you know, I'll just have some more input with John on the, uh, you know, with the lineup and, uh, you know, some game plan and, and talks, you know, like about the other teams and video and, and things like that. But, uh, you know, I'm also a player. It's, uh, it's a new, new, uh, new, new job title for me and uh like i'm excited for the challenge and uh i'm really looking forward to it and uh you know seeing what the other side is uh all about and family looking forward to, to coming back over of course yeah yeah exactly uh you know uh, my wife loved it there and uh and uh we're uh, we're excited very excited to come back obviously the the coaching role is a new a new um experience for you but you've been playing for a long, long time, and you've probably played under a number of different coaches. Have you have you got an idea of what what you can bring as a coach? Obviously, if you've played under a lot of different coaches. There'll be a lot of different styles there. Or is this something you're going to need to learn as you go along? Uh, you know, I have. Uh, you know, I, as a player, you know, you you usually bring what you are as a player to your coaching, and you know, I've always been a hard working guy, and. Uh, I think that's going to be the way I coach as well. So it's, uh, you know, it's going to be, I'll find out more what's going to, you know, happen once I get over there and how, how the transition is with, uh, being a player and assistant coach. But, uh, there's a lot of guys that have done it and, uh, I know it's, uh, it's been easy for some and not so easy for others. So it's, it's one of those things once you're in it and experience it and then, uh, then it'll be easier to answer that question. I need to ask you very quickly. Last when you and I met briefly after you got back from Belfast after the very successful GB campaign, uh, have the GB guys yeah. kept in touch with each other? How's that group dynamic worked out? Yeah. You still keep in touch with some of those guys? Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. You know, uh, I think you know, especially when you uh, you win uh, you win a gold medal together. I think uh, that's something that hadn't been done in a long time. Uh, there will always be a certain amount of staying in touch with each other and. Uh, it was a great experience, and uh, those guys that have been playing together for a long time, they brought me in as if I'd I'd been a part of it for a long time. So it, it was a great experience, uh, and uh, I, I loved every minute of it. And, of course, one of your teammates, Evan Mosey, has just been uh, announced as coming back to the Nottingham Panthers. So familiar your face back there. Yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, you know, it's, it's I know he wanted to stay over in North America and get something done in the American Hockey League. You know, I, it's too, too bad it didn't work out for him that way, but... Uh, yeah, I think it's uh, good for good for the league to have him back over, and uh, uh, he's a good guy. And I'm sure we'll be playing together again at the at the at the Worlds. Yeah, I need to ask you a quick question about the conference system, not in a negative sense, just in terms of obviously the changes that are coming up with a new conference, two new teams in. Obviously, the Scottish Conference with the four Scottish teams as, as a standalone gardener. What are your thoughts about yeah. that? Again, does that does that change? Does that make a dramatic difference? to how you think no. about the season? Uh, not, no, not really. You know, like I said, it, you just, you got to win, you just got to win your, you got to win your division at, uh, or your conference and, and that's, that's the most important thing is to, to make sure you win that conference and then when you're playing the other ones, you know, it's, uh, those are bonuses and uh, anything extra that gives you an opportunity to win the league and uh, those are the games that are, they're going to be tougher but they're going to be the ones that, uh, that uh, that are important, uh, but the league is getting better. Every team's getting better. Uh, I, I know we saw that last year with uh, with Edinburgh and uh, things like that. So the league's getting better because there's there's better more players coming coming in and uh, that you wouldn't normally see come over. Um, it's just uh, the league all around as a whole has just gotten better. And then adding the two new teams, uh, you know, it's just it, it's good for the league. I think the whole thing is. Uh, is exciting and uh so i'm I'm not worried about the conference uh the way the changes is it, it you know it is what it is and that's the way uh that's the way it's set up so you just got to deal with it whether you like it or you don't well that's your talk where the conference is up to so <laughs> um <laughs> well, i'm not so, starting um, on that no um it's it's all as you touched on that the the league's got to be better again next year and and um 
you know, the, the amount of signings and the quality of signings that some teams have already made are, are, are quite high. And you, you said Evan Mosey back to Nottingham's a big get for them. Do you think this is going to be the, the your toughest year in the league yet? It's been, not even when you're mixing it with coaching, but just in terms from from playing, is that the quality just seems to get be getting on be, getting better as it goes on? Uh, yeah, you know, I think uh, because it's because it is getting better. You know, you have to find ways to get better yourself, and uh, for the guys that have been in the league before, and uh, you know, sometimes uh, I think you know when. I've been able to play at you know some of the higher levels that uh, you know that that could come in as a, an advantage for me and these guys that are coming in. It, it's just going to make everybody a little bit better as a whole, as a team. And uh, but uh, you know you just got to be ready to play every night, or else you know you're going to lose because the league has gotten better. You know you can't have you can't take a night off, and especially with every game being so important and uh, to win the league is you know is what everybody wants. So. Uh, you just have to be ready every single night, even more now because the league is better. Obviously, with a lot of the uh, signings, uh, Brooksy, in terms of what's happening, there's a lot of players that obviously we don't know. We've not seen them before. Everybody can be an elite mm-hmm. prospects expert, so straight away you're onto the stats and everything. There was a little bit of surprise when Ryan Nye was announced. I, th- I think that was just presumably because um, we knew that he'd been the goalie for for Tripper's team. Mm-hmm. Do you, have you, you do you know the guy again from your German experience? Uh, no, I I never never ran uh, ran into him, and I know that uh, John John really likes him, and uh, I think you know looking at his stats and talking with a couple of guys that have played with him before, you know, like apparently he's the he's the real deal. So uh, we're we're excited to have him, and uh, I think he's going to be uh, a big asset, and, uh, and I think the fans are going to end up really loving him. Yeah, it certainly was a big positive. The fact that Tripper obviously made it made a quick job of getting him on board. Um, yeah, and I think that was a huge, yeah, that was a huge, uh, huge signing for us. And uh, and I know John. John knows him well, and uh, and obviously he, he sees uh, he knows what he was looking for, and he really wanted him. And uh, I think it was a great thing that we were able to sign him. Good, good. That's very encouraging. Okay, well, we'll just uh, we'll wish you all the best in the rest of your preparation, Brendan. Thank you very much uh, for your time. No Good problem. To to you. I'm sure no we'll problem. T- um, yeah. hopefully we'll talk to you on a regular basis, uh, and uh, certainly when you come over here and, and things get started up, we'll hope- hopefully have a chat then, see how things are. But uh, all the best uh, with the rest of the signings that you and Tripper are involved in, and uh, look forward to getting the season started. It's uh, just over a month away before the first uh, before the Aladdin Cup gets started against Cardiff and Nottingham. I can't believe it's so soon, but there we go. Looking forward yeah. to it. Well, sound, sounds great, and I look forward to seeing you guys. Okay, it's time for us to say hello to a few players and it's more a welcome back than a say hello to the guy that Graham, you and Stephen just talked to, Brendan Brooks. Um, there's not a lot we don't know, there's not a lot we can say except welcome home Brendan, yeah? <laughs> Absolutely, I mean, yeah, Brendan Brooks is a, is a known quantity to us and uh, I think uh, all clan fans pretty much must have been pretty delighted to hear, I know I was certainly delighted to hear that he's he was coming back and, and as a, as player assistant coach which is a further advance for him for his career and if he, and as, as I'm sure he will do, if he brings that tenacity and that spirit that he's got about him to the assistant coach role uh, as I'm sure, as I know he will, then it's going to be exciting stuff, so delighted to have him back and he's a, still a damn fine player so I think to to bring him back in that capacity as well. We know from speaking to him that he's he's obviously looking forward to the playing side of it as much as anything. So, um, yeah, great news. Really, really good. And especially with so little news and a brand new coach that nobody knows at this stage, it's it's a little bit of a comfort blanket as well, getting Brooksy back. Somebody that we know and I think we can we can trust to, you know, he, he knows what the clan's all about. He's got We know how much he thinks about the clan fans, the Purple Army, so I think having Brooksy back is uh, is definitely good and certainly, you know, we certainly enjoyed having a chat with him yesterday. And Jennifer, I mean, one of the things that, you know, there's reservations, if you like, about John Tripp as I'm coming into this league 
and we don't know what his knowledge is of this league. We don't suspect, given that he's been in Germany for so long, it is particularly good. So having somebody like Brendan, who's now been in the league, this will be his third year, um, somebody that knows the league, I mean, surely that's got to be a bonus. And it's got to be a... You could actually say it was an obvious appointment in many ways, couldn't you? Yeah, and it's also... Um, he's a player that's now got a view of the league from two slightly different perspectives, having been through the two different clubs. So um, that's always a, a bonus as well. But no, it's, it's great to have him back. He was one of these players last season, um, very disappointed that he didn't return. So to have him return um, this year is just kind of quells that, um, that little disappointment. And I think, Stephen, I think most people would agree, um, and for whatever reason, we wouldn't go into it, you know, why Brendan didn't come back last year, but I think we can all basically agree it was a mistake and it was a guy we, we could have had last year that had done us a job. I mean, he was averaging almost a point a game for five last year. Yeah, definitely. We had a, a, a big issue with secondary scoring last season. It was Berline and Levitt, Becker and Pitt, and when Hammond came in, him to get the point. So it would have been good to have Brooksy back uh, last year to, to help out in that regard but I'm absolutely delighted he's back this year you know I think mistakes have been learned from how good a player we let go um, at the end of last season and uh, it's good that they were able to get a deal done and, and he's back and also to have him as assistant coach because we spoke to him I think it was at one of the podcasts we recorded at your house and he was talking about how he wanted to get into coaching so I'm, I'm, I'm glad that that was able to get sorted out as well Yep, excellent. And as part of a wee competition we're going to run this week that I forgot to mention anyone else before, <laughs> we're going to, there's a few players we're going to talk about, um, and Brendan Brooks, obviously again, I'm assuming is going to be wearing his number 49. Only one other player has worn number 49 for the clan, and Stephen, you keep your mouth shut, I think you know the answer to this. You may well have one of his jerseys, unless you've managed to get rid of it, um, hanging up in your closet. <laughs> 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 I'm struggling here, and that's just I, I know it. I, I, yeah, know, I know it, it now, head, but yeah. I would never have remembered that. <laughs> there's, there's about three or four of these going through the programme. If you get the right answers, just answer hashtag 49, whatever the name of the player is you think. You get, I think there's three or four of them. If you get the four right, you get your name in to the hat and we'll get a prize sorted. We've got a couple of NHL jerseys here, the old Reebok ones, which we might get our hands on, um, and we'll get one of them to whoever's going to be the winner. Um, Gary Russell, um, a welcome back to Gary Russell. You know, we keep talking about him all the time. Um, best backup in the league, Jennifer? Without a doubt, um, he had quite a lot of ice time last year, so I don't doubt for a second that he's going to want to come back with that that hunger for getting even more. So, yeah, no, great, glad that he's back and he's been able to um, work out a deal with his other career as well. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, he ended up appearing in 20 games last year, which was probably the most in any one season for what was termed a backup goalie, Graham. And I think it's one we hoped would happen. We talked about it the last podcast. We, we hoped, we wished, we wanted it to happen. You know, and, and here he is, Gary's back, Mr Dependable. You just know that if he's got to come in, there's absolutely nothing to worry about, don't you? Absolutely. And uh, I think we said at the start of last season, in fact, that probably not not quite following the Belfast route, but, you know, you can't just depend on the one goalie because hopefully not injury, but just general wear and tear and, and everything else that, that comes into it. You, you need a solid backup because they're going to get ice time at some point. They're going to have to play at some stage. Uh, and Rusty stepped up to the mark, no problem at all. So, yeah, absolutely delighted to have him back. Yeah. And Stephen, you've always been a big fan of Rusty, haven't you? Yeah, um, definitely. I'm glad he's back. I was concerned that he might not come back because I was thinking, who are we going to get that's just as good as him in the in the position? I couldn't think of anyone. So so it's a, a load off the mind knowing that we've got someone if something happens to, to Nye, he gets suspended or, or injured or something, we've got someone who's good enough to come in and, and, and play back up for a few games until the, the starter's back. So I'm delighted he's back. And Gary Russell's one of those players that's going to wear number one again next year, and only one other player has worn number one for the clan. So that's the second part of the competition, if you can tell, is the other player who has worn number one for the clan. Uh, another huge welcome back to Matthew Haywood, um, clan's all-time top appearance record holder at 395 games. Uh, five games, and this is elite league games, that doesn't include the uh, friendlies or anything, or pre-season tournaments, that's 395 elite league appearances, uh, we won't be long into the elite league season when he hits the 400, um, three year deal, it's, it's extended by two years this time, which will take him up to a testimonial, and Stephen well deserved, yeah. 
Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, never thought when we, we first went in season one that we'd have a player for as long as we had, <laughs> Matt Haywood, and it's well deserved. You know, he's been consistent for us. He's he's always willing to put his body in the line in every shift he plays, and I'm glad he's here for for the foreseeable future and hopefully a little bit. 